Hey there. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. There we go. Hey guys. Hello everyone. Hey Chris. Keegan of Tunnel Fame. <laughs> no coffee. We'll talk later. <laughs> yeah, Keegan, you're famous. No comment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. We all on board here? Mary, you on board? Hey, Gabe. Hey, long time no see. Mary, are you there? Yes, she's there. She was having trouble with her computer. I'm sure she'll be on just a moment. Hi, Brandon. How are you? Hi, Chris. Lieutenant Waters has on a different uniform today. Can you hear me? Yes. We can. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I'm having all sorts of computer issues here today. But if you can hear me now, we're ready yes. to roll. You ready? I'm ready if you are. All right. It's uh, 5.01 p.m. And I'd like to call to order the Public Safety Commission regular meeting of April 6, 2022. This meeting is being held by teleconference due to the COVID-19 pandemic, and we appreciate everyone's patience as we navigate this Zoom meeting process. Commissioners and city staff are participating from remote locations and all votes will be taken by roll call. Members of the public can participate in the meeting or watch it by going to malibucity.org forward slash virtual meeting. At this screen, you can click on the tab to sign up to speak on particular items or the tab to watch the meeting. You will only be able to speak during the meeting if you sign up to speak before an item is called and you are present in the Zoom meeting. So please make sure you visit malibucity.org forward slash virtual meeting early to sign up to speak and, don't, and download the Zoom application. Commissioners, if you have comments to make during this meeting, please raise your hand and I will call on you in turn so we can make our discussion clear for the record and the public. You'd like to do roll call, Mary? Of course. Uh, Commissioner Ani? Present. Commissioner Gibbs? Here. Commissioner Spiegel? Here. Vice Chair Stewart? Present. Chair Frost? Here. You have a quorum and ex officio member Woodworth? Here. Is also here. Good. Uh, Gabe, are you, uh, you hear me? Yes, sir. Gabe, would you like to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Certainly. Okay. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation <laughs> in God, for justice and for all. Thank you, Gabe. Can I, uh, can I ask while. approval of, approval of the agenda? We'll work on that one. <laughs> approval of the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Do I have a second? I'll second. Doug. Great. Was that Keegan and then uh, Doug seconded? Right. Right. Thank yes. you. Commissioner Gibbs? Yes. Vice Chair Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Anit? Yes. Commissioner Spiegel? Yes. Chair Frost? Yes. Motion carries. Great. Um, Mary, can we get a report on the posting? Yes. The agenda for this meeting was properly posted on March 31st, 2022. Thank you. Do we have any written and oral communication from the public? We have one speaker. 
Jeff Epstein. Um, is he in the meeting? You do see him in the meeting? I don't. Um, um, why don't we go ahead and do staff updates? It looks like Joe has her hand up, Joe Drummond. Uh, okay. Joe, did you wish to speak? Oh yeah, I just wanted to say I just that I'm sure you all know that there was a fire in Chatsworth today, and I'm guessing that fire season is starting. So hope to hear some plans for this year on that. Thanks. Fair enough. Um, why don't we go ahead and do staff updates, and uh, right before commissioners' reports, we'll see if the speaker, other speaker, is in the house. If not, okay, we'll move on. Um, go ahead with staff updates. You want to start, Rob? Oh, you threw me off. I was expecting Susan. I was huh. so. I can start um, with you. You want to start with Susan? No, it's fine. No, it, it's um, a couple things that uh, um, that I want to bring to the commission's attention is uh, um, there's some there's some issues out on the Trancas Bridge. Uh, project Caltrans is doing and we're working closely with Caltrans to try to resolve some of those issues. One of them is uh, um, that <laughs> pretty feeble attempt to prevent people from turning left out of the uh, going across over there and they have a couple signs and a couple cones this is not doing any good. So we're um, we're working with them we're we're trying to get them to put up some of those uh, temporary kind of glue down barriers, kind of they're, they're little, like those little candlesticks. Kind of, if you go towards uh, um, Point Magoo, at Caltrans's project, they have much of those glue downs right where at the, at the intersection or at the, at the center lane. And so uh, we're gonna have them kind of add that to prevent cars from making that, that uh, left turn on the PCH out of the shopping center. It's really dangerous and, and uh, we've had several accidents there and, uh, we just needed to make sure that's set. They are starting on in the beginning of May, and so that may change up their whole procedure and how they do it. They have, they have they'll have K rails and stuff going in place, so it, it may be a temporary thing until they get there in May. But uh, we're working with them with that. Um, another thing that um, that I want to bring attention to the commission is that we've completed our our speed. Um, speed survey for the city. And, and uh, I am happy to result that or to announce that we have several streets that we're going to recommend lowering the speed limit. One of the, one of the streets that I, I want to bring to attention is Civic Center Way from Malibu Canyon Road to Webway. It's currently 40. It's going to be dropped down to 35. So um, it's a good thing. And I think it's going to help out some of the residents out there. I've been talking to one of them, seeing how we can get um, some of this all worked out for him and kind of get that residence kind of a little safer out there. So um, I think that's about all I had for public safety wise. Um, and I'll be available for questions. Susan. All right, let me start with just updating on some existing projects I know you're all interested in. The increase in the parking fees for the uh, citations that you all voted for is going to the city council on Monday. So mark your calendar if you want to be there to comment on that. And then the impound yard item is scheduled for April 25th. So it's another mark your calendar if you're interested in commenting at the meeting. Uh, update on the flock camera. I followed up again with the lieutenant in the sheriff's department regarding that. Uh, unfortunately, I get an email back that he's out until Friday, so I'm hoping to hear back next week. But in the meantime, I have started uh, the uh, purchase process with that. Uh, I sent the contract that they sent to me to our city attorneys to start reviewing. So I decided to get that rolling at this point. Uh, but again, even we're going to have to watch it very carefully um, because there is still a concern that we would be in a position where we had to manage a public records request. But I think we'll be able to work something out, you know, talking with the sheriffs. But anyways, 
we're moving that forward. And then uh, the recruitment's going well for another fire safety liaison or two, just so you know, we, it's a full-time position, but we got permission to advertise it as either full-time or part-time. So depending on who we get to apply, we may do two more part-time people or one full-time person. That recruitment closes next week and we're hopeful that we'll have some good candidates. We've also gone out uh, for a press for proposal for homeless services that just went out um, this week. So we'll report on that in the future. And then the, uh, Sarah's not here. Sarah, Sarah is, uh, Kaplan is very busy finishing up our application for a hazard mitigation grant, the one that will support doing home hardening for our residents, a rebate program that I think I told you all about before. We're very hopeful that we will get that program. It'll, from what we can tell, would be a first of its kind. And so we're, fingers crossed, we'll get that and we'll be able to offer that before we get into peak fire season, which I know fire season is all year round, but I still can't think of the peak fire season to be still in the fall, but crossing our fingers, it stays that way. But um, anyways, that's about what I have. I'm gonna let Gabe uh, chime in here because we are having some increased fire weather and he can brief us on what's going on. Sure. Uh, just for all, Sarah is here. She's okay. she's still working on the grant. Yeah. Don't there bother her. Let her finish. She's going to be here all night, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, they had a little fire in, in Chatsworth, uh, a traditional spot. We They have them off the 118, north of the 118 by Rocky Peak. Some structures were threatened. LA City, LA County, and Ventura County all come together at that little area there. So they were all on scene. Um, we got the long range weather forecast from the National Weather Service uh, about a week or so ago, and it's calling for extended um, heat waves in the near future and warmer temperatures in general above normal. So what is of note is that the live fuel moisture went from 180 to 120 in about the last 28 days. So that's a significant, significant drop, and that's indicative of how well fuel will burn. Um, so that's not a good sign. Uh, we are in a heat wave, as we all know now, be record-breaking temperatures um, starting tomorrow, uh, Thursday and Friday here in Malibu, potentially, uh, with very, very low humidities, like uh, three to seven percent range. What's interesting is that the last several wind events, which is pretty much every week now, um, <clears throat> the wind has been all around us and has not impacted Malibu much. And it's the same with this current event. Uh, the winds are gonna be really almost normal the next few days. Uh, the closest elevated winds are gonna be over in Ventura, Santa Barbara. Closest one to us will be in Topanga Canyon. Right now it's it's flirting with red flag at Topanga, but then it drops off dramatically as the, as you go west in the Malibu and, and the winds are relatively calm here. So uh, that's a good thing when the wind misses us, we'll take that anytime. And then that's all I have on that. Great. Luis, do you have anything to add on the homeless front? Yeah, so for the homeless front, uh, since we had the last public safety commission, uh, we had a special city council meeting uh, late in March, I believe March 24th, um, where the homelessness task force presented their uh, ASL recommended action plan. So this is a robust document that basically outlines the feasibility of establishing an alternative sleeping location uh, slash interim housing site uh, for homeless individuals in Malibu. So that document pretty much outlined kind of some findings that the task force was able to compile over the last few months by meeting with partners and going out to these facilities to see them themselves. Um, the city council did approve uh, unanimously to move forward with one section of this plan, and that is to um, pursue a, the establishment uh, of an ASL outside of the city of Malibu using non-city funded resources. Um, so we're currently in the process of working with our task force to you know, meet with their, our partners at the county, at LASA, at you know, different neighboring cities, and just really gathering and learning to develop a, a plan for how we're gonna implement this moving forward. So hopefully we'll have an update for you all um, in the future. 
Thank you. I guess that does it for staff updates. So let's go to commissioner reports. You want to start with Brent? You ready up there? In there? Sure. sure. Thank, thanks, Chris. Um, good to see everybody. Uh, you know, we were talking about um, some of the wind and the dry conditions um, and the increased focus now on, on fire dan danger. I was up at um, meeting with UC Berkeley yesterday and we were talking about fire danger. And one of the things that their scientists were pointing out is that some of the increase in winds that are coming in, we're seeing more of the Santa Ana and other conditions, partially from the heating that actually has occurred with the huge loss of the um, forests in Northern California, the fires over the past few years has actually caused what they found an increase in a heating effect, which is also driving some winds. It's part of all the, the global warming issues. Um, but things that, that I know I've seen over the past few weeks been involved with, one of them, I'm very pleased that um, there's been some great training that's gone on with um, home ignition zone training. Uh, Keegan is a, is a big part of that, helping to lead these efforts with, with Tyler. And that has to do with the foundation that's doing some of that. And I know there's a lot of other people, Topang and others that are doing it. Uh, Pat Derwin did a great job in a two-day course. We had folks from CORE that participated in some stuff. Habitat for Humanities was there uh, and other folks as well. And so getting more people up to date as to how to look at and assess those kinds of risks is, is great. But, but it's interesting, one of the things that came up when I got some calls from uh, different folks within Malibu area talking about assessing risk, but their concern with the winds and with the heat is back to as the fire department starts to do its job in reviewing um, different communities and homes to see if they're going to cite them for potential violations. The focus becomes again on enforcement of that. Um, and I think there's a lot of concern that goes around about homeowners in certain locations that just don't want to do it. I mean, you can tell them, ask them to trim the trees, the homeowners associations can actually encourage them to do that or to take measures to mitigate the risk. And they still don't do it. So looking at different ways to encourage them or to push that and one being, you know, what can we do to get additional enforcement capability with the support of LA County Fire? And of course the county goes back to the agriculture department. And so that may be working through the board of supervisors to encourage them to expand the staff and the, um, the, the direct job of the agriculture group in enforcing and going after folks that do not um, correct the problem that uh, is pointed out by the fire department. So that's something that I've heard multiple times and just wanted to, to bring up as a potential uh, focus area, of course. Um, one of the other things we always talk about is the, the brigade stuff. And I am pleased to tell you that, you know, we have um, come up with a great list on all the equipment for communications and repeaters. And we're looking at funding right now for that. But um, as far as type of equipment and some of those locations that's now been uh, identified. That's it, Chris, back to you. Thank you, Brent. Keegan. All right. A um, couple quick things. Um, first, uh, you know, last meeting, our meeting as well as the city council meetings, speeding in the canyons on PCH, uh, there's been a big topic. I saw some stuff online. Um, I just want to give a really huge nod of appreciation to both the sheriff's department and to uh, CHP because I know that they've really taken a much stronger stance at enforcement and harder crackdowns when they do catch people. And I do think it's making a difference. And I really hope that um, it sustains, especially through the summer. Um, in response to the last meeting, um, I actually met with Megan Courier from Drew's office or Chief Smith's office. And she has the ability to be able to, we, you know, we talked about heat maps last time, or I brought up heat maps last time. And she has the ability to be able to take any parameter and map it on a map, as well as date and time into a spreadsheet about what type of accident, whether it was advanced life, life support, basic life support, fatality, all sorts of stuff. And then put it out either on a visual map 
literally as an overlay over the over the city to see which intersections and areas are the hottest and also to be able to put it on a time map in terms of like a calendar. Um, she gave me a few quick um, previews of what what those look like. No surprise, um, the hottest moments are Saturday night and Sunday between noon and 3 p.m. Um, by like a magnitude of like five to 10 X, which is pretty insane. And this is for advanced life support. So that would be like a, a, a bad auto accident. Um, I am hoping to meet back up with her and to request like a series of these heat maps to kind of correlate with um, actually the scheduling of both CHP and LA County Sheriff in our area to see if there's a good correlation between um, coverage essentially and when our peak times are. Because you know, a lot of times we see uh, motor cops on like in, in morning uh, rush hour traffic for people to catch people speeding heading into, um, into work, right? Especially in the Z traffic coming through the valley. Um, but interesting enough, there's not that many accidents that happen in that time frame, in that time frame. maybe because it's police more. Um, you know, I'm not trying to tell anybody how to schedule. Um, it was just a really interesting way to try to correlate um, you know, our, our high risk areas. Uh, so hopefully by the next meeting, I'll have a little bit more with that. Um, I have a question, I guess, for Mary. I'm not sure. I'm wondering if there's a way to automate a notification system for the, I mean, for us, but for all the subcommittee councils that would allow us to be notified when topics that we voted on have gone to council. Um, a couple times there's been topics that we voted on that I thought were really well um, discussed that I would love to have caught at the council, but you know I just missed. Um, so wondering if there's a way to be notified. Would you know about that, Chris not, or Mary? Not, not necessarily by topic. You can always sign up to receive um, council agendas um, through the website, just like, you know, sign up for a notification and you can review it. Um, but normally those kind of things are left to staff to advise you like Susan did under staff yeah. comments today. She let you know that next Monday right. and the following. Yeah. So it's not, it's not possible um, short of it coming just directly from staff. So um, Susan could, if it, if it's getting close and we may not have time to tell you before it goes to council, you know, something like that. Like if we weren't meeting tonight, we were meeting next Wednesday, she wouldn't have been able to tell you about Monday. Um, we can always send an email to the commission just to let you know, just like I will occasionally send yeah. you an email about an event that I think you might be interested in or something. So, um, Susan or Rob or Gabe, whomever, um, it's kind of you're put on notice now that they want to know. So in the future, when something gets scheduled, we should probably send an email. Yeah, yeah. normally normally I catch it, but I, you know, it would be yeah. really cool to be able to have an automation process just to be able to know because I, there's even been times where I've looked at the agenda and missed something because of yeah. how it was titled. You know, there's, especially the city councilors sometimes such massive agendas, so. Yeah, it's, it, it would be hard to automate it by, to yeah. get something, you know, that, that you know, specific. Yeah, yeah. So it really is up to staff to let you yeah. know. And so we can do that in the future. I think yeah, that's a, that's a great comment. That and just, and, and we'll know. try to, we'll yeah. try to get that kind of worked out. And that means this kind of us yeah. working with Mary to kind of get that over to you too. So I think yeah. we can do and something like that's a, kind of a very great idea. We'll, we'll, we'll get something. Yeah, maintaining a list of what commission actions resulted in something going to council so that we can track it and then when it's scheduled for council, we can shoot you an email. I mean, that's easy enough yeah. to do. And I think that's a really good idea because we've done it kind of here and there, but not as a habit. And I think it would be a good habit to start. Yeah, it'd be cool just to be able to, you know, have that process somewhat automated and be, when the agendas go out it's like flags us is like hey 
a public safety item that was pushed to council or was voted on here is going to council in case you want to either listen, maybe even make com additional comments, et cetera, or even be able to correct the record sometimes, you know, so. Um, then Susan, you were talking about the fire mitigation grant. Um, and I think what, what are the parameters for how those funds are used and how much money are we asking for? I'm gonna let Gabe answer that because he's working very closely with her on the application. Okay, cool, awesome. Sure, so the, the grant is for a total of $500,000. Uh, it's matching, uh, city will be putting forth $125,000 and uh, FEMA OES will be putting forward 375. Um, the, the way it's going to be laid out, Keegan, is that it's all about home hardening and it's going to be put out to the public. But what we're going to focus on first is the people who took the initiative in the past two years to have a home ignition zone assessment and uh, give them another assessment unless they've had one in the last three months. <clears throat> and then that'll be waived, but to give them a chance to uh, get involved. Um, after that list is, is uh, finished, then we would open it up to the general public. Um, if we look at the math on it, you know, we're looking at a maximum of them receiving $10,000 um, with matching funds. So they put in 10,000, we, you know, and we'll put in 10,000. So the homeowner has to put in a dollar to receive a dollar? Yeah. So, so um, if we do the math on that, we're looking at and they max it out, let's just say theoretically everyone maxes it out, that would be 50 homes, five zero. Um, we're assuming that not everybody's going to max it out and that there will be monies left over for more people to do some things at their homes. Um, it won't be an all or nothing as far as what we recommend. It's gonna be based off of home ignition zone assessment with a list of recommendations and they can pick and choose what they want to tackle. You know, they don't have to do everything. So um, it's gonna focus on things like uh, removing wooden decks with hardy board type decks. Anybody who has wooden siding, doing hardy board siding. Same with wooden fences. Um, certainly uh, vegetation control, removing certain trees and bushes from the home uh, further out. Focusing on the first five feet, that, that ignition zone, um, you know, putting things like pavers, concrete, stone in those areas. Um, see, we mentioned windows, going with dual pane windows would be another option for people. That's probably the most expensive ticket other than replacing their whole roof. Um, yeah, just the, the things that you've been doing in your, in your classes, uh, the same things. And we're going to make a formalized list of you know, what qualifies specifically. So there's no ambiguity uh, moving forward. Awesome. I, that is a really, really, really great program to hear. So essentially it's up to a million dollars of mitigation work. No, it, 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 it'll be a total of 500. Right. From the city. Right. And, and, but if the homeowner puts it in a buck, the yeah. city puts it in a buck, I mean, it's a million bucks. Right. Um, so that's really, that's really great. Uh, thanks for that. Um, I'll, I want to talk to you offline about that uh, okay. soon. So, Keegan, um, I, I actually kind of misspoke. It'll be um, like we put in a dollar. The homeowner's got to match by a half. So dollar fifty cents. So wow, great, but, um, cool. But uh, yeah, we you know we have high hopes. If if we can do this, it's just a game changer for the city. I mean, the weather's going to stay the same. The topography's going to stay the same. The yeah. fire department staffing is going to stay the same, and, and that leaves the only variable that we can't improve on or we can't improve on is home hardening so we we have high hopes and there's never been a grant of this type in california on private property so it would be a a huge thing uh it's due tomorrow or two days actually friday <laughs> so uh, we'll see what happens you know it's, it's a lot a lot of work sarah has been over the top working on it with input from brenda and they've been they've been killing it and you awesome nice work, work. Yeah. <laughs> In regard, yeah, I mean, wildfires are inevitable, but, um, you know, home burning doesn't have to be inevitable. Right. That's kind yeah, of the and it's, it, we tried to be very careful in creating a program where not everybody needs financial assistance, but we need to be able to incentivize people to do what they need to do. Um, but it, we also wanted to truly help people who really did need 
you know, a little financial assistance to make it happen. We know not everybody is flush with funds. And so we wanted to make sure that we we're able to help those people. And yeah, it's more of an incentive to get the others who can't afford it to do what they need to do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it, that incentive is really valuable. Um, the last thing, Joe Drummond made a comment earlier about the fire stuff. Um, I think it's important too to note, to note like we're in a very low risk time. And I think it's in terms of our uh, emotional capacity to be able to deal with fire threat. I think it's important that we don't like to have boy who cried wolf syndrome, right? And then like by the time the fall comes around, like, oh, there's already been so much fire threat. You know, it's like, there's really only a handful of days a year that you really have to be super careful because um, high fire spread really only happens under really unique conditions. So um, yeah, anyways, that's my last, my last comment. Thanks. Thank you, Keegan. Uh, Josh? Thank you, Keegan. Uh, thank you, Chris. Um, I don't have much. I'm going to save uh, a lot of it for 4B. Um, maybe I'm taking Doug's comment, but uh, Susan, can you give us an update on the license plate reader implementation? Um, what's yeah, going on with I, that? I actually did that during my step. I'll just do it again. The flock cameras. Yeah, I'm waiting. I sent an email to them to get an update on the MOU, and then I got an email back that the guy's out of count until this Friday. So hopefully I'll hear from them next week. But in the meantime, I have initiated the contract with Flock. I sent the agreement they sent me. I sent it first to the attorney's office for review. Uh, and that's where it's at. Do we have any time estimates that, that we could rely on, hope for? Um, well, I think that when I last, I spoke with Flock, they said that realistically, even if we had the MOU in hand, they're probably take three to four months to get cameras up, get deputies trained. Like it doesn't happen overnight. So uh, I'm really hoping we have something up and running before the end of the year. Um, I think it's very possible. So I would say that's a, a realistic goal for this. Okay, I'm just writing it down. Um, okay. Um, does anyone, can anyone tell, uh, remind me and the public when um, the fire department required brush clearance is due? Yeah, I could speak to that. Okay. June 1st, isn't it? May 31st, June 1st. Yeah, usually um, Malibu is usually uh, starts one month later after the rest of the county due to the type of fuels we have here, the heavier fuels. Um, so most most places start May 1st. Traditionally, uh, Malibu starts June 1st, but the local assistant chief has the authority to uh, change that. Okay. I know um, Al used to do a lot of it. He's he recently sold his company, but... Um... I think that there's a lot of people out there. I think that, do we have that information? I mean, who to call up on the city website for brush clearance? You mean, you, you mean who to call for to actually do the clearance like Al used to do? Yeah, because I mean, Al used to just show up and send a bill, but um, he, he sold his, sold his business. Right. Um, that company can still do it. He's just under, you know, he's working with uh, Charlie. I don't remember his last name. Dave knows his last name. There's also um, uh, Berk Randy Berkeley. Uh, he's a possibility. Those are the only two I really know of at this point. Yeah, people uh, people have been asking, you know, who do, who do I call? Al's gone, so um, I just want to make sure that that information is readily available, um, so it doesn't kind of bleed into June, July, August. Um, before this uh, before. But understand that we, we can't promote any particular vendors on our site. It's not what the government does, unfortunately. Sure. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I did want to echo what, what Keegan was saying about um, just the craziness on the highway. Um, we can talk about more in 4B, some of the questions that I have. 
Um, I would like to give props to uh, Captain Fender and, and Lieutenant uh, Waters for um, kind of cracking down on the car shows. I saw um, tweets go out and Instagram stories go out saying, hey, we're, we're going to start cracking down on this. I think that's that's pretty cool. And I'm uh, interested to see how that's how that went last weekend. So I'll be uh, eagerly listening to that in 4B. But um, for now, I think that's that's all I have. Daphne? I don't have anything to add tonight, Chris. I'm sorry? I don't have anything to report. Okay. Anything you want to ask of anybody or why you're up no, and... I, I'm, I'm going to be quiet tonight. Uh, I'm asked to do that quite often. It doesn't work with me, though, but... <laughs> Uh, let's let's move. Thank you, Daphne. Let's move on to Doug. Uh, here's here's another chatterbox uh, for the evening. By the way, um, Keegan, I think that your heat map idea is outstanding. Um, you know, one of the things you do quite often in business is you have risk based assessments, and sometimes you can spread assets around like peanut butter, and everybody says, "Oh, you know, I've got so many people I saw on the road, uh, police or whatever." But really, what you need to do is have them by the, the potential risk. And we do this all the time in business in risk-based auditing, risk-based uh, safety issues. So I think this is an excellent idea. And I really applaud you for bringing this together, both from the fire department as well as the sheriff's department. Good job. You, you're always an inspiration. I got to tell you, I got I to work hard to keep up with you and Josh and uh, uh, Daphne. Um, a couple other things. Uh, yeah, the car shows and mini bikes, uh, thanks to uh, the two lieutenants. I think that's been a, quite an uh, improvement. I know uh, anecdotally, and it's only you know one weekend. This last weekend on Latigo Canyon, we did not have the car races like we usually do. And I know uh, some of you heard me refer to it as uh, Latigo Le Mans, and it was there, but it wasn't nearly as bad. So hopefully that's a trend line. Uh, on the flock cameras, uh, Josh, thanks for bringing that up. And also to Susan, um, what about permits? Uh, you mentioned uh, getting some of the other things done. But if we can do something concurrently, if we need permits, that would be an excellent idea too, I would think. Yeah, I mean, if we need permits, yeah. I mean, all of it's moving forward together. Yeah. Okay. Because I think uh, Rob or might need to get involved in that if it's uh, Caltrans. Yeah, it depends issue. on the poll. So yeah. I'm pulling the polls and I looked in Calabasas, they were placing their cameras. They did this last fall. They placed them on city-owned traffic lights and on Edison poles, which I thought was interesting. Hmm. Um, so we need to look at the locations because if you recall, the commission identified the locations last fall. I was in the middle of pulling that up and then I got distracted by something else today, but it's, it's all on the target because we need to relook at those locations, see if any of them are going to need special permissions and that'll have to get rolling at the same time. Okay. Yeah. And I'm not, uh, you know, pushing flock. They just seem to be the front runner, uh, front runner around the country on these, um, but they don't require any kind of a hardwired connection. They're solar and cellular. Right. So uh, the installation is pretty uh, uh, easy, I think, just having some place to put it in the air. Um, fire inspections, absolutely essential. As I sit here at uh, my house here in Lago Canyon, we've got black mustard that's probably four to five feet high. And it's got to be that way all over the city. I, I've seen it virtually everywhere, especially where you had the fire a few years ago. So this is going to be a real gasoline uh, can if we get another fire going in here. So anything we can do to get the Department of Agriculture and the fire department to get those inspections done and get compliance, that's critical. Uh, I know we don't have anybody from the fire department on right now, but Gabe, if you can uh, put your thumb on the scale to get that uh, accelerated, that would be helpful. Uh, homelessness and the MRCA. Uh, I understand at the last MRCA meeting, uh, the topic was brought up about trying to coordinate between the Sheriff's Department and the MRCA Rangers. I don't know how many rangers they've got, but uh, I believe Joe Edmondson was very favorable to try and work together with the uh, Sheriff's Department on uh, working on the areas that are under MRCA jurisdiction. So I'm passing it along to uh, Lieutenant Waters. Um, I think there's supposed to be an outreach from the MRCA, but I'm just passing it along. Uh, blood drive at City Hall on Friday. Uh, from a safety standpoint, I got to tell you, if you don't have blood and we have a, an emergency or a uh, critical injury situation, 
they got to have blood. We've got some of the shortest uh, inventories we've ever had in blood in the city, uh, in the county. Um, it's at 10 o'clock on uh, Friday at City Hall, and you need an appointment, I think. So um, I always look to Rob. I know he's got plenty of blood to give. Always, so. <laughs> All right. Um, RVs. Uh, Lieutenant Waters. Uh, we got to get some more compliance going on along the highway here and around the city. We've got some of these RVs, especially on Corral. I counted as I came in uh, uh, for this meeting. There are nine RVs that are parked on Corral, and I'm going to guess six of them have been there when I left this morning uh, quite early, almost at dark. And we got to get some enforcement going on those. I, they're easy pickings. Some of these guys aren't moving at all over, overnight. We've got uh, oversized vehicle issues uh, in the Civic Center. And, you know, I'm preaching to the choir, I realize, but uh, when you let a couple of them show up, then they all go, gee, it must be okay for everybody else. And here they come. And today, the LA City passed uh, a resolution to turn back on their no camping RV ordinance uh, effective next month. So we can probably figure that uh, wherever the people that are on uh, Playa Vista or in the city of Los Angeles are potentially going to be looking to come here. So it'd be good if we had uh, strong enforcement before they show up. Lastly, um, I don't see anybody here from the planning department, but I'm going to speak up for our uh, uh, Alert FM. We've got the equipment for the east side booster for KBU to go in at Bluffs Park. We just need the uh, planning department to give a permit to put that in. And for those that aren't familiar with it, this antenna is about the size of a, of a old style TV antenna, Yagi antenna, and it would be virtually invisible on top of the building there at Plus Park, where there's some other antennas already. We just need to get this thing up and we can start testing FM alert. And also this isn't to benefit uh, KBU, but uh, KBU gets nothing out of this except for the fact that they would be a carrier and we hopefully can get others uh, to be the carrier if we can get uh, this established here in Malibu as a test site. We just need the planning department to move. I understand from Hans, it takes two days to get this up and running once we get the permit. So we're good to go. Um, so Susan, Rob, tell Richard I'm coming. So we're talking to him tomorrow. Yeah. Just seeing a city manager so and I met with Hans last week and there's some more discussions that need to happen because it's more than just that that he's requesting. So okay. I'm All not right. ready to report on that. Whatever it takes, but uh, yeah. I'm looking at it from the standpoint that uh, Shake Alert, FM Alert are all tied to the same uh, uh, foundational system. And the sooner we get that up to alert the city, better off we are. Uh, that's all I've got. And um, oh, one last thing. I believe on May 5th, the uh, new captain for Lost Hills will be appointed by then. I think we all like uh, Lieutenant Fender. He's been to our commission when he was assigned to Calabasas before. In fact, he talked to us about block cameras. Uh, I think there's a, a, a real positive vibe from him. I haven't heard one bad thing about that, that fellow. And uh, I know uh, he's strong on Chad and we are too. So uh, you put the two together, I think we'd have a really good uh, result and I wish him best of luck on his application. And hopefully uh, we can make a captain uh, fender sometime soon. That's all I've got. Uh, Chris, over to you. Thank you, Doug. And, you know, I want to echo what Doug just said about that antenna getting it up. I think that that's a, uh, a big move forward to get the communication off the ground. I think one of our biggest problems we've always had during any kind of disaster out here is communication. It's our number one, probably our number one issue. And uh, I think that'll fill in a big gap in there. So hopefully we can get that message to uh, back to uh, Richard and the planning staff and we can move ahead with it. Um, the Trancus Bridge that Rob brought up, I, I, it's, it's hard for me to understand what they were thinking when they put those two signs up out there with a, I don't even know what's holding them up. I mean, you could go out, I'm sure the wind's blowing them over by now, actually, um, which says right turn only, but leaves huge gaps on both sides that people just turn in and out of. And like Rob said, the potential up there for a major accident, left turn, U-turn, you name it, is huge. So hopefully, um, they do something about that in the next 24 hours because I don't think that's something that should even sit through a weekend at this point, especially with the weather being what it is. It, that place is going to be packed, packed coming this weekend. Um, 
thank you for uh, for uh, bringing up all the issue on the cameras. And I think along with that, for some reason, my screen just went out. Am I still up? Hello? You're good, Chris. Good You're good. You. All right, thank you. Um, uh, Rob and I had a discussion this morning and we actually, I discovered through the discussion, Rob discovered on his own and brought it to me that Caltrans is gonna have cameras at uh, each of these intersections between Topanga and John Tyler as part of their synchronization project. So we may get, we may get uh, you know, an added resource on top of the cameras we're bringing in and those sections then, should they be covered? Well, I think we first have to find out what we have to do if we need to get something. Um, you know, if we need to get something out of them to look at the cameras or whether Lost Hills can look at them or how that's gonna work. And I'm sure Rob, you know, we had quite a discussion on it. So I'm sure that you're going to uh, look into that and give us a, an idea of what we get from that. Um, if that's gonna help us with our security. I'm sure obviously we all know about the incident that, uh, that took place at Trancas last week. Um, and I think that having cameras up probably would have been very beneficial early on in that investigation. So obviously it's a good time to move on that. Um, hiring part-time fire liaisons. Um, I'll see Gabe perk up on that a little bit. You know, Gabe is part-time and doing one heck of a job as a part-time liaison. And I think if we have three of them in there, my feeling is, is that we're gonna be covered all the time and if we have a fire, I'm sure all three of those guys would be out here. I mean, that's what they do and they live for that. And, and I know from my background, that's the first thing you do is you show up. So I think that um, I'm leaning more towards the three, having three part-times rather than one full-time. So we'll see how that goes. Um, the hot mapping info that Keegan brought up, he and I have discussed that, well, not discussed it previously. He just told me he was working on it. And uh, I think that's a great idea. We can key in on certain areas. It means maybe for Chad, maybe then he's got more information on where, uh, where the guys in the motor should set up. Um, I think La Costa was a bad stretch also. Saturday night, I think the entire highway is a bad stretch, uh, especially from Sunset, well, from the city line into Rouse. That seems to be their, uh, their MO every other Saturday night. Um, the fire mitigation program and the grant, that's amazing. We've never had stuff like this before in the city till Susan took up this cause here and, and Chris Broussard and Gabe and Sarah and everybody have followed through on it. And it's just gotten better and better. And, uh, you know, there's no downside to it. Um, if we, you know, it also gathers its own momentum in the sense that uh, this, you know, 50 cents for a dollar, that whole thing, that gets people looking at the program and saying, hey, I'm interested now which means maybe their neighbor comes over and says, hey, what are you doing over there? So these kind of things, if they're played up, they get social media, we talk about them, people see them being done. Um, there's gonna be a great deal more that's gonna come out of this than just the initial people that are involved with it. Um, so I'm all on board with that. Um, and I think Keegan, as you speak about the fires this time of the year and um, the situation we're in now and where we only have a few days out of the year, that are really bad. You're, you're correct. That's there, there's certain days. I think the night before Woolsey, Anthony Williams told us what he thought the next day was going to look at. And unfortunately he was absolutely hundred percent correct. So I think also with the fact that Arson Watch has, I don't know, close to a hundred people. And now thank you, Todd. I think you're out there listening. You've done a absolutely amazing job and wonderful job with that. Uh, you're like the Mark Russo of Arson Watch. I mean, you, you know, you guys, you too, and the time you put into the city to have our backs is tremendous. And I hope people thank you. We certainly do. But I think having Arson Watch out there, and especially the fact that on these really bad days, you know, we have a multitude of people driving all kinds of different routes in the city, up and down PCH, up the canyons, down Tuna. That's a lot of eyes out there. That's like having fire towers like we used to have in the old days in the forest. That's like having moving fire towers, literally. So... You know, you go to bed at night with a hard Santa Ana blowing, be assured that out there on the streets, on the roads, are your neighbors out there having your back. So thank them as well when you see them. They're doing a good job. Um, I think that's it for me. That is it for me. Um, did uh, the person that was signed up to speak come back in? No. All right. So let's move on to the consent calendar. 
Can I um, get approval of the consent calendar? Uh, excuse me, we have two of the items have been pulled by the public. Okay. So items uh, three, or excuse me, two B one, one and two have been pulled. So you can um, ask for a motion to approve the consent calendar with the exception of those two items. And then we'll discuss those two individually. So it be. Um, I'd like to ask for approval of the consent calendar minus items 2B, 1, and 2. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Excuse me. Hold on just a second. I lost my... Okay. Okay, so that was Keegan. And no, Josh. I'm sorry? Who's Josh? Josh and Spiegel and Chris Frost. Thank you. Commissioner Spiegel? Yes. Chair Frost? Yes. Commissioner Anit? Yes. Commissioner Gibbs? Yes. Vice Chair Stewart? Yes. Motion carries. All right. So Mary, are the people, the public that pulled that, are they in the meeting? I, hold on one moment, please. Let me pull it up. Alex Stein. Ugh. I think we were being messed with here. <laughs> um, so I don't see, I don't see an Alex Stein in the meeting and it's the same person for both. So you can um, you can just address those two individually. Just call for a motion. Approval of the minutes, right? That's what it is. So, in this, that's kind of an odd case where that somebody pulls it and they're not here. So, do we go back then and ask for approval of items two B one and two separately now? Yes, just ask for a motion to approve two okay. B one, and then we'll we'll call the roll, and then we'll ask for a motion. To be two. All right. I'd like to make a motion to approve 2B1. Do I have a second? I'll second. second. All, right. All right, Mary, go ahead. Chair Frost? Yes. Vice Chair Stewart? Yes. Commissioner Anit? Yes. Commissioner Gibbs? Yes. Commissioner Spiegel? Yes. Motion carries. I would now like a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve 2B2 on the consent calendar. Um, do I have a second? Josh will second. Thank you. Chair Frost? Yes. Commissioner Spiegel? Yes. Commissioner Anit? Yes. Commissioner Gibbs? Yes. Vice Chair Stewart? Yes. Motion carries. All right, we're through consent calendar, we're through old business, and we're going to go to 4A. And that will be you, Susan. You're muted. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the agenda, and I was looking at 5A. Sorry. It's 4A. I don't, it went from 3A to 4A. Hold on. Commission assignments. Right. Um, it says 5A. That's why I'm confused. It what? Um, when I pulled it from the from the uh, the website, it says it calls it 5A. Huh. Yeah. You mean in the staff report? Sorry yeah. about that. So oh, okay. that's oh, why I was thrown off when you said 4A, but it's 5A. You're, we're correct. talking about the recommendations for commission assignments, correct? Okay. Yes. Are they in the packet, right? Yeah, I, I just pulled it from the website. So it could be a little different. Anyways, um, yes, thank you. So uh, as you know, every year we submit assignments for the, the commission for the upcoming fiscal year for the city council to approve. Uh, we went through the existing assignments and some of them we identified as ones that probably should be removed either because they were already done or over time the commission had Someone decided that they were no longer going to do that. And that would be, for example, the evacuation plan, that assignment was completed. 
and the public safety education newsletter, our impression is that the commission decided that that was no longer needed or desired. Um, and then I added in a proposed uh, work plan item is to provide input and feedback on um, potential fire prevention and hazard mitigation grant projects. Because these opportunities come up to us a number of times a year. And uh, we know generally the types of projects that would be good. And I just thought it would be good for us to be able to maybe come to the commission with some ideas for projects, uh, get your feedback on them. And then when opportunities come up, we have a ready list that we already know that you would support. Um, and that was the thought behind that. But we're open to other ideas, as far as I know, other assignments. So we're here to get your, your feedback on the assignments. Uh, and if there's any that you, you don't want to delete, like the two that were listed, that's fine. Um, but that's my staff report. All right, I'll open it up to the floor. No, Chair Frost, we do have one public speaker. Okay. So Ryan Embry. Ryan, are you there? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yep. yep. Okay, I wanted to suggest that the commission consider requesting um, the assignment to evaluate the effectiveness of the battery backup systems, which um, are supposed to help run the traffic signals on PCH in various locations. And, you know, the signals are quite variable depending on whether there's left turn phases and how many um, tangent segments uh, are included. So a signal like corral would, you know, is nothing <coughs> like the one at Web Way. So, um, the runtime in actual practice may not really be what they calculated or were, you know, bargaining for, or it may not be adequate. So I would suggest that that be one of the requested assignments is to evaluate the uh, effectiveness and operation of the emergency backup power for PCH traffic signals. And I'd like that also to be expanded to include the wireless transmission facilities, or I would call it critical wireless transmission facilities in Malibu, because I don't think every single one can, can get it. There's, you know, like 80 of them. Um, the important ones should be considered for that assignment. Um, I did submit to speak on the, the minutes for February 23rd, and I raised my hand, but I was not called on, by the way. And my only correction would be uh, for that was that the discussion was very limited of everything I had to say, but um, the angled parking that I'd proposed for the beach side would create an emergency lane on the bluff side. And I think that was very important because that was identified as one of the problems for getting emergency access in there and where they're gonna park, where they don't block the road. So the north side, um, I do remember mentioning that. I'd like the minutes to be corrected if you can open that up and do that. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Rob, did, did you wanna? Yeah, so um, I'll give you a brief kind of thing on the, uh, the backup battery system. Um, all the backup batteries um, systems from Topanga all the way to John Tyler uh, um, will be upgraded with the new with a new uh, traffic control control signal cabinet and with a new battery backup system. Um, so all, all of that um, will be done with our signalization sync project. Um, I also get updates and uh, um, from Caltrans on their routine maintenance, which includes looking at all the traffic signals throughout um, the city of Malibu. And, and they do that on a routine basis going through. But I'll be happy to, I always reach out to them, making sure the battery backup systems are operation and running. Um, this has become a hot topic for them and they are aware of making sure that they've done that. Um, they did recently gone through the whole city and look at the battery backup systems and have done that. And, but I'll make sure that's, that's done. That's, it's on my list of Caltrans things. And I talk to them every month or every quarter on that. And that's always a running kind of thing from them. And uh, um, I do that routinely. 
Uh, Rob, one other thing. How many of those are wired for uh, generators? Um, all of them are wired for generators from, I believe it's from Canaan all the way to California Incline. Really? Okay. Something like that. I, I, that's, that's what I've been told Caltrans has done it all throughout from even extent excuse me, extending it out farther from the city limits. But all, all of our signals from, um, from that point going all the way over to the east have the, have the battery backup, or I mean the, the emergency generator uh, transfer switch. I believe Heathercliff does too, doesn't it? I think that was the first one we did. Yep. So it'd be from Heathercliff to California. Yep. Okay. So we're only missing Bush Drive, Morning View and Trancas? Yeah, I believe so. I have to double check, but uh, um, yeah, I, I I believe so. Could you could you double check and let us know maybe next meeting? Sure. sure. Awesome. Thank you very much. Um, I don't see any hands raised, but I can't. I have a problem with getting everybody in. Ryan, I didn't see your hand because I don't have everybody in the meeting on the screen. Um, Vice so. Chair Stewart's the only one with his hand raised. And, I see um, now. Ryan was Ryan was not signed up um, in the system to speak to. Any okay. other items on the consent calendar? Fair enough, Doug. Uh, yeah, quick thing to Rob. Um, you know, those generators were a hot hot topic with me, and I appreciate all the effort putting them in place. Just wondering about the new cabinets. Are they going to have a um, auxiliary power input on them? And what are we doing about the additional generators? Oh, oh we're in the process of actually purchasing them right now. We're, we're trying to find the ones that we originally kind of purchased to make them sure they're all the same kind of a thing, and we're having a hard time trying to find those ones. And so we're looking to trying to get uh, um, ones, we could either try to find the same ones, the same model and kind of buy those, or we're looking to try to just get a replacement or an, an equal ones of those. So we're, that's on our, that's on our plan here to get it within the next, or, or by, by the end of the fiscal year. By the way, one, one other quick comment to Ryan. I hate to say this, but Ryan, you and I are in, are in sync on that uh, parallel parking and having uh, the open lane along the hillside. But uh, when we proposed it at the joint meeting, if you, I don't know if you were there for that, the fact that we didn't have additional parking, we would lose parking spaces that we couldn't replace. And for that reason, it was DOA with the uh, Coastal Commission. But uh, I thought it was an excellent idea because both of us thought of it, so. No other hands out there? Keegan, you look like you're contemplating. No, Josh, Daphne. Uh, I mean, I, I can say something on this on, on this agenda item. Um, one thing that I that I really want to focus on um, in this year would be exploring and making a recommendation for a permanent tow yard, um, year round thing. I think that we owe it to the community members. I think that there's just too much of a lag time for tow trucks to get here from over the hill clear an accident or tow a dangerous vehicle or whatever, um, we need a, a permanent tow yard. And I, I'd really like to see us uh, be able to make a, a permanent a recommendation for a permanent one um, to the city council. Um, and then I'd also like to get going on uh, the 2023 summer uh, tow drop site um, as early as possible. I, I just didn't really like the way it kind of ended um, with just us just, we explored a whole lot of places, but at the end, it just kind of felt like um, we rushed into Heathercliff, even though it's certainly a viable spot and I'm, I'm for it, but um, I'd really like to be able to go next, uh, early next year to the city council with a, with a little bit better solution. So th those are my comments. Um, I'll have more comments in 4B. Susan, do you want to, are you um, on this list? Are you, you're removing stuff that we've completed or we're not going forward with. Are you adding now also to this list we have here and pushing yeah, this was, forward? Yeah, I mean, the only thing I can think of that I, I think would be helpful to us as staff is for you guys to provide feedback on potential fire permission has a mitigation grant project. Because um, sometimes we'll get opportunities and you probably, you know, had Gabe or Chris reach out to you. I know Chris sometimes will say, what do you think about this? Because 
you know, we'll get all sorts of ideas, but then sometimes not all ideas are suitable for the community. Um, and plus, you know, more minds thinking about this. Uh, who knows, someone might think of something we're not thinking of. So I would love to be able to get input from the commission to get some fresh eyes and thoughts on, on that. So that's why I suggested that. If you guys like it, we can add it. I, um, I like it. Uh, how does the rest of our commission feel about that? Rob, you you got your hand up. I, I think I, I just wanted to jump in because it's, I think Daphne had her hand up. It's kind of hard to see yeah, kind of over there. See it. So I, I just wanted to, hey, hey, I, 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 I got okay. you, Daphne. <laughs> okay, Daphne, you're up. Unmute. So I unraised my hand at the same time. So uh, I, I just wanted to follow up uh, Josh's comment on the, the temporary tow lot. I, I ended up being the one dissenting voice on that vote. And the main reason was we didn't have alternate solutions uh, or prospects in the works. And just my experience is that once you start using a piece of property for a certain use, it becomes the sort of the default solution. And before you know it, year after year after year, it becomes our only solution. And I, I just I couldn't support that. Um, in terms of, and I know that there was a lot of effort done to provide or look for alternative sites. So in, I think it should be one of the items on the list. So it's a specific item. I did receive input from various community members about that meeting and the discussion. So it is an ongoing concern to, to members of the community. I think they're gonna to wanna to see that we're actively searching. The, the other thing is, is that, you know, in terms of options, we, we control the, the charges for the towing and you know, it may be that other properties that we haven't really thought about, maybe they're available to, to lease from you know, a private landowner who will who will agree. And then we you know, we recoup the cost as part of the as part of the tow fee. So I know up till now we've been looking at options based on what, what seems readily available. Um, but but this is something that is an ongoing, an ongoing concern. So I would second the request to put the search for alternate solutions on your project list. And just, I, I just wanna um, make sure everybody's on the same page too. Sin, I think since that last meeting, I did reach out to um, the theater, the, uh, I forget what, the, what they're calling it, the one um, the playhouse? from Heather Cliff. I, I reached out to them. They said, no, they were unwilling to lease it this year. Mm -hmm. I've, I have reached out to the Christian Science Church on, um, uh, Zoomerez, yes. um, they haven't they haven't really gotten back to me. They didn't really seem all that high on it. the The problem with the churches is they have church on Sunday, so um, that's kind of an issue. Um, so that that's where I'm at. So I'm still waiting to hear back from them. So um, that was that. So yeah, I do. I thank you, Daphne. And then I, I just have one other topic. Um, away from tow yards, but if you guys want to further discuss, I'll, I'll sit back and wait. Um, I'll, I'll throw in my 12 cents on that. Um, I've looked for a site that would be, um, shall we say, acceptable over the long term. I've been looking for over two years. And, you know, the school was okay as long as we appealed to their schedule, which at the end of the day left us with seven weekends we could use and not weekends that were holiday. It, was, it, was, it, it just wasn't going to work out. Um, the equestrian center had a bottom lot, dirt lot that would have worked out perfect. Um, that didn't work out. Beaches and Harbors had a piece of property inside of a turn going under the, under the bridge at Zuma uh, off of Bush Drive. And Susan and I, we got pretty deep into that one. We probably could have used it until we both figured out, Susan before I, that there's no way on a Sunday we would be able to get a flatbed turned around in there and in and out without causing a log jam and another safety problem. 
We this also care for about, us. We um, also, I, I hate finish, to interrupt. Please. I'm sorry. Yeah. I hate to interrupt, but we we aren't discussing tow yard sites. We're just it's just a matter of whether you want to add that to the list of assignments. I do, but I want it to be understood that we have done this search already, Mary. So I'm going to. I, I understand. Thank you, um, Susan. Do add it in there, please. Is there? Is there? Anything I want to make sure that that we're adding both. I think that these are. This is two. To, they they sound similar, but I, I do want to make sure that we are working on a permanent site for year round. Right, that's something that we that, that the city has typically always had until fairly recently, and then as a separate issue, the summer drop lot in in West Malibu. I I certainly agree. I don't want to do this every year. <laughs> I don't think you do either. So I would agree yeah, with that. Yeah. yeah, it is actually. Um, so Susan, do you want to add that in there, please? I'm assuming Mary's catching that in a minute. So. It sounds like y'all are in agreement. You're fine with the suggestion that I made, but you also want to add in Josh's suggestion for uh, working on finding a permanent tow site and then working on finding a temporary site for next summer. So starting to look for next summer. Um, and if we're lucky, they'll be the same place, but you know. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So that would be three additional items. So we're removing. To... Fair enough. Keegan, didn't you want to add something on there or were you just embellishing on one of the other's items? No? I don't think so. Well, the home heart, the deal you talked about, Susan, in the beginning? Maybe I'm, I'm just confused that maybe I'm talking about two different things. Okay. Um, so with that, I guess we would like to call on Rob because he's I... got his hand up. <laughs> yeah, I think that I think Brent has something, and and I have one okay. or two too. So uh, go ahead, yeah, Brent. Not vote before we get to both of us. Yeah, so just just real quick, and Susan, tell me if I'm wrong on this, but one of the things um, that might be valuable is to be able to review or understand the level of resiliency of both the water and power utilities impacting Malibu, so that we continue to look and see what are they doing to ensure the resiliency of the services that they provide to, to Malibu in both those areas, water and, and, and power. Um, it, it'd be nice to make sure we continue to focus on that. And then the last one, while the evacuation plan exists, I don't think it would hurt us to look at um, continued uh, logistical support during evacuations. What, what kinds of things can be done to um, improve when that process does occur uh, to make it easier for people to get out and, you know, improve uh, access, safety and security and so forth. Not that you're changing the evacuation plan. It's just trying to enhance the logistical aspects of people getting out. So those are the, the two things I would think of, the, the water and power resiliency and then um, logistical support during evacuations. I just want to address the water and power. We're going to be doing that to some extent. We're going to do, be doing pretty... Uh, pretty sophisticated tabletop exercise looking specifically at infrastructure that'll occur in September. We're out mm -hmm. to bid right now for a contractor to help us with that. And we're gonna be getting pretty deep into infrastructure resiliency and what it would look like if we had a catastrophic failure, pretty much all infrastructure from an earthquake. So I think we're gonna get a lot of information out of that exercise, yeah. um, which would probably address them because I, I agree. I that's my biggest concern. Infrastructure is the that thing that we all take for granted until it's not there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Josh, well, thanks. Oh, I'm sorry, Brent. No, no, I, no. Thank you. I mean, if you feel that, that that covers it and it shouldn't be a specific item for infrastructure, then you know that, that that's that's fine. Yeah. Well, I think it'll be that'll give us a, a really good start, and maybe based on what we find th from that, it may kind of bring up some other issues for the future. Um, but I think that's going to be a good starting point for sure. Thank you, Brent. Josh. Thank you, Chris. Uh, the one, one other thing that I wanted to talk about, and it's been on my mind for 
over a year is, and I, and I want to get to this in maybe later this year or early next year, is having Arson Watch discuss with the city of Malibu and the sheriff's department about maybe expanding some of our some of the roles. Um, we've a, we have about a hundred people. I think it's like 80, 84 uh, full fledged members right now, and another dozen or two dozen in the queue, and you know we're fully vetted by the sheriff's department, good, hard charging people. And, um, it just seems like a wasted force multiplier for us to just be sitting around and going out on weekends and, um, looking for fires. I know that we act as eyes and good witnesses, but, um, if there's a way that, that we could round up, um, you know, a couple dozen, uh, arson watch members to really act as a force multiplier in our city, I think that we'd be much better off. And I don't know, I, I'm not in command of Lost, Sher Lost Hills. I'm not, at, I, I don't know what we could do liability wise, but um, I sure would like to, to see some of our uh, roles being expanded in the, in the coming years. So I, I don't know how, how that's going to work, but I, I'd love for um, hopefully permanent Captain Fender and uh, Lieutenant Waters to, to get with Todd Prince and, um, you know, we can start small and hopefully move into an expanded role. Susan, is there a way to put that on there? Because since we're not really in, the city's not really in control of Arson Watch, they're a subsidiary, so to speak, of Lost Hills. I think that's a conversation with Lost Hills. I mean, my immediate thought is join the CERT team because that is the city's... Uh, mm -hmm team to help with a variety of things during an emergency and we can meet we really could use some new blood um i mean that's my first thought but uh yeah i think it's a conversation with the sheriff's department or i don't think we can start getting it's not our program josh i think i think it's something that that's yeah i listen i i support the idea if it can be worked into the system properly uh, but that would be through lost hills and you know that's a discussion to have with chad and with um captain fender would we be able to form some sort of ad hoc to discuss with the sheriff's department um i see i just i just don't i, I want to get i want to get the ball rolling and i, I don't necessarily want to just leave it up to todd you know i think that um you know, whatever we can do as a commission and as, as a city to really value this, I think that that, that brings a tremendous amount of value to our, to our city. So I, I don't, like I said, I don't know how to, how to phrase it. I, would, I wouldn't know how to, how to bring it back as an agenda item. It's just something for all of us that, that we should be thinking about. I mean, we have a hundred people with, with good local knowledge ready to, and willing to help. So that's just that's just one comment, and I, I just thought it would be a good time to bring it up. I I agree with what you're saying. I it's just it's not a city program though. It's it's in the city, obviously, but it's going to have to go through the sheriff's department. They're the okay, ones well, that regulate the program. Okay. Well, maybe we we'll, we can talk about it a little bit on four B. Yeah. Okay. That might be good. Thank you, Chris. You're very welcome. Thank you for bringing it up. Um, do I have any other? Anybody out there that wants to speak to any of this on this assignment page, other than what we spoke, Rob, you got your hand up. Yeah, I, I just wanted to let the commissions know that whenever there's an opportunity that um, that for either the city's projects that relate to public safety or Caltrans projects that relate to public safety, uh, I'm going to bring those up. Um, I, I know Caltrans is trying to do something over over at Malibu Seafood. And once they kind of figure out what they want to do over there, besides uh, I'll have them come and provide a presentation. So I, I just want to let the commissioners know is whenever I see those things, I'm, I'm going to bring those things to you guys. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate that. Malibu Seafood's never going to go away, is it? Um, all right, so we're, Susan, we're back to you. And whether or not, I mean, how do you want to go forward here with adding the items to the list and then we vote on that? 
Yeah, so someone needs to make a motion. I'd like to make a motion to add to the list the uh, the tow yard item that Josh brought up, um, the entire item, both items, uh, permanent and uh, temporary. Um, and I think is that was there there wasn't another item, was there? It was just his two items. There were you're you're um, muted, Susan. And to provide input and feedback on potential fire permission hazard mitigation grant projects. That's that's the one I was referring to a little earlier. That's what I meant. Um, okay, yeah, that that should be on there. Um, and if you want to put those two items on there, I would be willing to make the motion to approve the list. Do we need to take anything off the list? We did. We took off item number eleven, I believe. Did we take off anything else? Well, the question was regarding number nine. Um, and Brent had provided input on that, but I don't know what you guys want to do. Uh, I think that, with that I'd like to I'd like to see that stay on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do we is there consensus on there? I mean, I think it should stay on there. It, it look at it's uh, there's no downside to having it remain on there at this point. It brings up a good talking point when we need it. And, you know, I'm sure that there's going to be information that's going to come in regarding it. Okay. So uh, were there saying, any other items on there? I'm sorry, Chair Frost. So you're saying that um, we're requesting that all, all of the assignments from the current fiscal year be carried over to next year with the exception of the public safety newsletter. So leave yeah, on I, item nine. Correct. And correct. then we're also adding, hold on. Um, also adding number one, the search for a permanent site for a tow yard, a search for a site for a permanent tow yard. Number two, search for a temporary site for a tow yard for summer, uh, for summer 2023. And then adding in the fire mitigation projects. Yeah, a site alternate to the Heathercliff location. I'm sorry? An alternative to the Heathercliff location. The temporary uh, is that for summer 2023? Right. The, the temporary site is to look for a, an alternative to the Heathercliff location. Okay. And could I ask that we change it from uh, tow yard to impound lot? <laughs> yeah. Good. Chris, would you want to change that to impound from impound to tow? Change it from tow to impound. Yeah. Yeah. That's a hot topic. Keegan, nothing on that? Which was that? The uh, temporary tow site, temporary impound site. <laughs> now you got guys got me doing it. Renaming it? Pardon me? You mean, do I have any insight on renaming it? No, 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 no. Uh, nothing. I was just, you know, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> yeah, we're voting. We're all, we're going to vote yes to to put it on the put it on the calendar, right? Yes. Put it on the assignment sheet. Assignment. Sorry. Yes. Thank you, Mary. Let me know when you're you're ready. Just a second. I'm going to get it so that you can see it up on the screen. Uh, one. Okay, I think I got it. No. Um, can we put it on this screen, Parker? Will it show? Okay, there we go. So recommend that the city council, to provide a recommendation to the city council that it approved that all assignments from fiscal year 2021-2022 with the exception of the public safety newsletter, be approved for assignment in fiscal year 2022-23 with the addition of one, the search for a site for a permanent impound site or impound lot. 
that what it's supposed to be? It's either way. No. Yeah. No, yeah. To, uh, oh. to the permanent tow lot. The per and then the Wait. and then the summer impound lot is, is separate. We want okay, so, yeah. So permanent will be what do you want to call the permanent one? Either a lot or a yard, as long as it's impound and not tow. Okay. Impound, okay. Impound lot. And number two, search for an alternative to the Heathercliff property location for the temporary impound lot for summer 2023. And then the fire hazard mitigation projects. I'm not exactly sure what the- Oh, that's provide yeah. input on, I, I'll send that. Okay. I, so, I have something here. Um, I actually think site, our lot should be site because wherever, whatever we use, we probably are not going to be using the whole lot. Okay, so lot. just call it an impound site instead of tow yeah. yard, tow lot, whatever. Impound yeah, because site. It may be part of another property. So, okay. Impound I, site okay. it will be. And, and number one, we search for a location. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mary, number oh, one. Oh, I see what you're yeah, saying. I, uh, if I can edit it again. Search for uh, a location for a permanent impound site, right, Daphne? Yes, please. Okay, got it. Permanent location for an impound site. Search for an alternative to the Heathercliff property location for a temporary impound site for summer 2023. Good. Save that. Okay. Okay. Okay, I made a I made a motion to approve that. Would somebody like to hold on? It's wrong. Number three is, is stated incorrectly. <laughs> Number three is stated incorrectly? Okay, yeah, tell me what tell me what it should say. I can't see it, so uh, let's just for simplicity to provide input and feedback on uh, I don't want to say just fire prevention on grants because we get grant opportunities all the time and we are so it's a grant funded project so provide input and feedback on potential grant funded projects to be broad because uh, it's not just fire prevention on potential fire hazard mitigation grants and projects is that what you said yeah, I think in the staff report it said fire prevention and hazard mitigation grants. Okay, Mary, that know, one, Parker. I don't know if the correction to the to the point one took hold. Oh. Okay, it doesn't show on the full on the oh. screen. So here's what I have. Recommend that the city council approve that all assignments from the fiscal year 21-22, oh, I've got the dates wrong, but I'll get them right, 21-22 fiscal year be reassigned to 2022-23 task list, except the public safety newsletter with the addition of, number one, search for a permanent location for an impound site. Number two, search for an alternative to the Heathercliff property location for a temporary impound site for summer 2023. And three, provide input and feedback on potential fire prevention and hazard mitigation grants and projects. Susan? 
Yeah, it's fine. With, that's fine with me. Okay. All right. Do I do I need to remake remake the motion or can we go with my just ask okay. for a second? A second. So was that Daphne that seconded? Yes. Sorry. Thank you. Chair Frost? Yes. Commissioner Anit? Yes. Commissioner Gibbs? Yes. Commissioner Spiegel? Yes. Vice Chair Stewart? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Susan, for putting that together. Thank you, Susan, Mary, and everybody. Yes. You all did a good job. And now we're going to four B, I believe. Is that correct? It's listed as five B on some things and four yeah. B on others. I apologize. We it's, have three. Uh, and we have yeah. three public speakers. It's four. It's four B on the uh, on the actual agenda sheet, but on the staff report, it's different. So that's different. yeah. I ap I apologize for that. I actually missed item one, which there was nothing for item one presentations. I just missed it on the. So are we talking about the public public safety agency activity, Chris? That's the only yeah. thing we have left. Okay. Um, you want to hear from the public speakers first, Ryan? Yes, let's let's hear from them. Okay, so we first have Ryan Embry, followed by Joe Drummond, followed by Bill Sampson. So, Ryan, you can go first. Yes, can you hear me now? Yep. Okay, I wanted to request that I've done it several times. Under noteworthy events, when it's covering the entire month, that they be dated as to maybe when the either the incident occurred um, or when it, at least when it was reported, if it was, you know, somebody's burglarized and they have no idea, but and that they were listed in chronological order. And in particular, if you're on that page or if you could go there, the first and second events listed both show that a transient basically accosted, threatened uh, um, a resident, uh, one after um, I guess what, getting into their car and stealing things. And then the second one I think was uh, attempted uh, US mail theft, if I recall, I'm not looking at it at the moment. So uh, my question is obvious, was this related? Was the description you know, the same? We're talking about one transient or is this two separate incidents? Cause they're, they're on different roads, but they're the linear beachfront and if the arrest occurred um, after the other report, uh, was this guy arrested and released? And did he, did he go and uh, do the mail uh, issue, which was the other item uh, on Noteworthy? Um, the other one was, um, there was a traffic accident listed as occurring, and I'll call it a crash, uh, because it was at the signalized intersection of the city's newest signal at Stewart Ranch Road and Civic Center Way, which for the purposes of reporting should probably use the public street name Webb Way for statistical comparison. So in the future, when we're evaluating uh, collisions in that signal that, you know, it not be in two columns. Last month's the uh, the traffic uh, issues were you know, duplicates and it was all messed up as you you know, and it, um, so hopefully that's cleared up. But why there would be a collision at our newly engineered and designed uh, uh, intersection uh, is interesting. And I was trying to see if there was support uh, for what occurred. Maybe Rob could say quickly. Um, I also noted it said zero parking citations. And I'm wondering if that's only because it was the sheriff did not issue them, if it was the volunteers on patrol, which I think is should be listed as sheriff or one way or another in the report for statistical purposes. The last is um, it shows that a beam broke off of Malibu Pier and I guess was floating around. Um, this was a tsunami concern identified by Professor um, Costa Sinalakis is a world-renowned expert. He's right here at USC at the School of Engineering and he runs the Tsunami Research Center. Um, I attended a seminar, God, maybe 17 years ago about this kind of stuff. Um, but the Ryan, your time is up. Thank you. Okay. 
Next is Joe Drummond. Hi there. So I also want to thank the acting Captain Fender for the increased traffic enforcement. Although I did get a ticket myself going 49 in a 45 coming out of Big Rock Drive onto PCH. So that was overkill, but hopefully they don't continue to target responsible residents, but enforcement is obviously increasing. So that's great. I saw on March 27th, seven CHP officers stationed at Big Rock and PCH. I'm wondering how they were deployed. Was it because of the motorcycle speeders heading over to Neptune's net earlier that day and hoping they would come back that way? I had heard that CHP was not patrolling any longer, so we were happy to see them there. So I'd love some clarity on that. There have also been a number of residents who have seen congregating of all beach patrol officers at Westward and Zuma Beach. And after some research into last year's summer enforcement team, it seems that there are 14 officers deployed to the beach patrol and only 7.5 officers for all of Malibu. It would be better to deploy the 14 officers to the PCH and canyons and the balance of the 7.5 to the beach patrol and Zuma. We are paying a fortune for these officers, so they should be utilized in the best appropriate locations. Also, I'm wondering, you guys hopefully have worked on this since Woolsey, but if the fiery evacuation process has been organized with the sheriff for the next wildfire, will they be allowing all four lanes of traffic to go one way so we don't have what happened during Woolsey happen again, so the evacuation is much faster and smoother? I don't think there is only a few days that we are at risk. We have a lot of red flag days. We should be vigilant at all times and encourage the residents to be ready. So I hope our evacuation is going to be led properly by our sheriff's department. I also hope they will allow CERT to help them the next time and let them through the barricades. Big Rock where I live has a lot of fuel and that, that hasn't been mitigated yet. The fire department issues warnings for brush clearance but never follows through with fines or citations. This needs to be followed up with our new fire liaison or put on the city's website to follow up with residents on this, like you guys were suggesting earlier. Can something like this be implemented for follow-up between the city and the fire department brush clearance? And that's it. Thanks. Okay, next is Bill Sampson. I'm ready. Are, am I on? Right ahead, Bill. Go okay. ahead, Bill. Uh, step one. Thank you, Mary. I, I know I should have signed up earlier. I didn't know I was going to be around. I'm sitting in a hotel at an airport. So I, anyway, um, thank you for getting me in. Sorry I was so late. I, I heard some of the same numbers that Joe mentioned as far as allocation of uh, sheriffs. Uh, I've never, I've spent more time in not that much as a wanted man by law enforcement. I don't really know how, I'm not gonna tell them how to do their job. And the statutes run, uh, Lieutenant. So uh, that said, if Joe's numbers are right, it strikes me as, I think it's a reaction I have been told and please correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't know, but I, I would be concerned. It's a reaction to uh, riots and unrest that occurred at Zuma depending upon whom you talk to in the 70s, 80s, or 90s. In the 80s and 90s, I played volleyball down there pretty frequently, though we tended to leave at 11. I think the trouble happened later. And then like everybody else in Malibu, by 11 on weekends or even earlier, we uh, shelter in place, as it were. Uh, now, uh, there's another thing to react to, and it's clearly the cars. Uh, Josh, I, I, I'm with you on the uh, impound sites. Uh, I would be happy to help fund a special car crusher for Italian cars, um, but that's off topic. Uh, seriously, the, the allocation of, of deputies might be better. Some of the pictures I saw uh, disturbed me, but there may be a good explanation. So there's always another side. Uh, there seem to be deputies just standing around talking and allegation that they said they were on a coffee break and the response was that they were debriefing each other well i'm willing to hear the other side uh, I, I heard some complaints uh, i did not make them i didn't see it happen i wasn't there uh, but if we if the numbers are right 14 versus seven and a half please at least consider putting them over there one of the things that annoys probably everybody here is that malibu pays a lot of money to patrol somebody else's beach. We also spend a lot of money patrolling somebody else's highway, uh, but that's just part of living here. Uh, 
back in the good old days, I even played golf with Hayden Finley, the lieutenant, and Jerry Rudy, the highway patrol commander. It was great to have them both here. I wish we had them both. I'm glad we've got the sheriffs doing what they do and hope they can stop some of the cars and still maintain peace at Zuma, where I won't go on summer weekends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Um, I want to quickly clear up one thing before we go any further here that the eight CHP motors at the foot of Big Rock were part of Hunter Biden's security detail. They had nothing to do with us or Lost Hills or anything else for that matter. So clear that up. Um, all right, it's, it's your turn there, Lieutenant. Okay, so I'll address a couple of the issues that were just brought up because it seems like some of the facts aren't exactly facts. Um, as far as the 14 deputies, 7.5, that's nowhere close to being true. Um, as you know, the beach team is only deployed during these hot summer months from uh, in big weekends from Memorial Day to Labor Day. And the amount of deputies that we have out there uh, ranges from uh, four, four to six deputies and one supervisor. Um, you might be thinking about some of the other people that are being deployed, such as parking enforcement, uh, people out there doing the towing of the vehicles and some of the volunteers. So those stats were not correct. And uh, I, I hope you uh, take a look at those a little bit um, better instead of, instead of spreading false, false uh, narratives, at least look at things a little bit uh, more factual and, you know, trust that we're doing our job. Um, the, these issues that are going every year with the, with the beach, I know it's a contentious issue to a few. Um, we definitely have to have a presence down there. We have heavy drinking going on at the beach. We don't have people uh, patrolling the beach. We have issues in the parking lots down there where we have groups of, especially with social media presence these days, groups of uh, car, car clubs, gangsters, um, all kinds of people coming down. And it doubles the occupancy of, of the Malibu area, just with Malibu or with Zuma alone, sorry. So this is a huge issue and it really, really impacts everything from public safety to traffic safety uh, in the entire region. So I want you guys to at least, you know, look at that and see that, you know, we are doing our job out there. And you, know, you see deputies sitting around talking every once in a while. You know, that's not just us sitting around talking, it's us actually talking about how we're going to deploy in the area and other issues that we're having. I sat and talked to a couple of my deputies today out in that area and uh, for about 15, 20 minutes. And then next thing we did is we went out and started writing tickets. I wrote tickets myself today. So I've been out there um, dealing with the problems with RVs up and down the coast, um, commercial vehicles parked in residential areas writing tickets and towing myself. So these are big issues that we have that are public safety issues. They are uh, heavy on the mind of uh, both myself and Lieutenant Fender, and we are to, taking steps to enforce these issues. Uh, that, being, uh, that being said, with the beach team, getting that out of the way, uh, we are also, um, Doug, looking at the RVs. Uh, we made a huge improvement on those over the last month and a half, two months. Uh, if you go down through the nighttime hours, you'll see that there aren't hardly any down there in those areas overnight during the hours that, you know, they can't be there. So they're moving and leaving. But when you go down there during the day, there are quite a few because people are just coming in and hanging out during the day. And it just gives the perception that we're not doing anything, but we actually are. It's been a huge turnout um, with the deputies working on this. Uh, that needs to continue to continue to work, too. Um, we, we will continue to work on that. As far as these car shows and the issues that we're having on the weekends, uh, we're taking major steps to address those as well. We put out a social media blast last week. I had a lot of people not like it, uh, but we are taking action on it and we are going to slow people down. We'll be doing uh, enforcement, not only on the weekends, but during the week. And it is a zero tolerance policy when it comes to speeders, racers, and people with modified exhaust. 
those are the big issues um, for for traffic as far as traffic is concerned. I also heard that no traffic sites. Somebody stated no traffic sites were written. Uh, I have twelve hundred and ninety three right here as far as stats are concerned for parking. Twelve hundred ninety three for the month month of March. Uh, those stats were provided to me by Mark Russo. When it comes to other operations that we've done, I have a DUI checkpoint that we had down in your area. Uh, we ended up getting two DUIs out of it. Four uh, people had suspended the license, their cars were towed, and 10 people did not have licenses at all. And we also took a gun off the streets um, during a search. Eight vehicles were towed total on that. So those are good stats there. As far as the safe canyons, I know it's something Big Kagan's on. Uh, we are uh, very proactive on that right now. And you guys got to know too, that does directly impact Malibu because every single one of those canyons bleeds out into PCH. Um, 184 sites just for the month of March. So really on that as well. Um, when it comes to the major incidents that come down through, let's see here. I think Bill mentioned it. Yeah, we can definitely provide dates for those incidents that occurred uh, and know the two transients were not directly related. These are different transients. I, I oversee the detective bureau and I know every single one of these incidents that occurred. So um, those arrests were made and yeah, they, they were not associated. They were not associated with the two. Um, so the things that we can look forward to um, or we actually need from the city and from you guys, Chris, is, and Susan hopefully is, come up with some city ordinances to help us uh, with no camping and overnight parking. I think that that would just tighten those up and that would really help us out, be able to enforce that. Um, we're already working on the parking lot over at Cross Creek and getting some signage up in there so that we can start enforcing the vehicle code on that private property. And that'll really help with the weekend car shows as well. Um, other than that, you know, Captain Fender, or sorry, Lieutenant Fender, hope, hope to be Captain Fender, will be, uh, is doing a great job as far as, you know, giving us the tools to do the things we need to do to help out the city of Malibu and the surrounding areas. Um, he and I have worked together for almost our entire career, started up in the Animal Valley together. We are like-minded when it comes to enforcement. So we're on the same page with all this. Um, you you would be uh, hard pressed to find a better person to take the role of captain here. So um, do you guys have any questions for me, Chris or Susan? No, but I just, I don't know if you know this, but the city council did update our camping ordinance last August. Um, so I'd be happy to fill you in uh, yeah. later. We can touch base on that. And yeah, it's the just, other ordinance that you mentioned was what again? Mark, you just said, yeah, the overnight parking, because I think the camping and the overnight parking are really the same issue because right. people who are overnight parking along the beaches are literally camping there. They're sleeping there overnight. So Right, so not I, just oversized vehicles because we have an oversized vehicle fine going on Monday, but then there's an overnight camping. And I think we were looking at a county code to possibly okay. adopt for that. Perfect. Okay. And along that line, yeah. the, the fine structure, I think, for that overnight camping on the county was the 100, 200, 500 step up that we uh, uh, mentioned when we went over the fine. So it, I'm going to have to unmute. It's not a city ordinance, but it's a county that we're using for that. Uh, Chad, I have, we have actually talked about this, so I won't, I don't need to go back into detail. And I, we understand that the, um, all the working parts in the ordinance now, having to chalk the tires at midnight, come back at two or come back at four. We understand that that's a whole lot to have to do. And, you know, we would like to have a straight oversized ordinance, a straight midnight to 5 a.m. oversized ordinance. Then you can just paper them as you go down the highway. And it isn't like you've got to come back and, you know, go through this whole rigmarole to get it done. Unfortunately, you know, we have to deal with the Coastal Commission and that part of it hasn't been addressed yet because of our concerns about coastal. But um, the fact that we're gonna to go to 100, 200, 500, 
we may have to chalk a few tires and go through that for a bit because I think once a guy's racked up eight hundred dollars in a week, he's probably moving on. And and you know it's the best we can do right now, and especially with like Doug said, these guys down in the Civic Center and the guys at Corral, the guy in the Civic Center. A couple of those guys have been there for months. One guy's been there two years. So, it, it, you know, I, I know you guys, I, you go down to Topanga between Topanga and Coastline, it's a different world down there. I mean, you guys cleaned that up big time. Um, so, yeah, and it does look better in Malibu. There's no doubt about it. And we would like to have a better ordinance for you to be able to, uh, to make the enforcement easier because it was really literally why we got that third early car was to enforce the oversize in the parking. Um, and at Corral, it's a, double, it's a double whammy because they're parked overnight, oversized, and they're parked in a no parking during those hours. So that's kind of what it is. We'd love to give you a better ordinance if we could. And maybe we will at some point for absolutely sure, but keep bringing it to us. Whatever you guys need that would help you, bring it to us and let, let us look at it and do what we can to help you. Okay. Yeah. It's all about that. Um, I know you can talk about the homicide or the, the uh, fatal up there, Trancus, but you might want to just uh, maybe give the community a little bit of knowledge. Yeah. Rumors. Unfortunately, I can't say too much about it because it's a homicide handle. So they're, they're doing the investigation. They've asked us not to speak on it too much because they have details that we don't have. Um, it was an isolated incident is all we can say right now at this point. Um, still has not been determined by the coroner whether or not it was an actual homicide or an accidental death. So we're waiting on that information. Um, other than that, like I said, it just, it, it's a, it seems to be a, an isolated incident. So um, it, there's, there's nothing to any fallout from that. It looks like it's going to be happening in the community. So that's the big thing. Um, it lo looks like a lot of our stats have gone down this month too, as far as uh, aggravated assaults, a lot of them were domestic violence, uh, related and uh, one transient related. The only thing that we've kind of been having an issue with are uh, kids out with paintball guns and pellet guns. And that's going on everywhere throughout the region. So I think it's it's a TikTok type thing. So my detectives are on it already and we're, we're trying to identify these people. Um, other than that, we're just having the same things. The vehicle burglaries down by the beaches and unlocked vehicle thefts. Um, and we're going to get a something going on that here in the next couple months as well. When uh, weather starts getting warmer, we're gonna start targeting those people. Chad, thank you, I appreciate that. Um, do we have any questions, Josh or uh, Keegan, Daphne, Josh? Yeah, um, thank you very much, Lieutenant Waters. You know, we, we noticed right away, I think, um, I don't know if it was last meeting when uh, Lieutenant Fender came in and, and said that he was going to start some, uh, some operations to get some of these racers and speeders and man of his word. I mean, absolutely did a lot. Um, can you talk about briefly um, how, what uh, sort of enforcement you undertook this last weekend for the car shows? Yeah. Instead of having the, deputies inside the parking lot and dealing with trying to just make sure that it was a quiet and a, you know, uneventful type car show. We actually put the deputies out on the street and waiting for them to leave. Cause that's the big issue. When people are leaving these things, they try to flex and race each other out, out, of, out of the parking lot, out onto PCH, out onto uh, cross Creek. And um, that's where we we're stopping them at that point and making the, uh, you know, taking the steps to cite these people for their violations. Um, because it's, it's really hard to enforce inside that parking lot right now because uh, it's private property. So we're taking the steps to do it on the outside rather than on the inside and them coming in and going. So and we're going to continue to do that every weekend with heavy enforcement. Outstanding. Thank you very much for, for talking about that. And then the other thing that I wanted to briefly touch on was that um, – I know I want to I want to talk about very briefly another arson watch topic. Um, I believe that we have maybe a, a dozen or two dozen applications waiting at, at the station. And I just wanted to see if there was any way that we could get those applications sped up a little bit. 
Yeah, I'll talk to my reserve sergeant, uh, Sergeant Armstrong. He's the one who handles those, and I'll see what the status is on. Thank you very sure. much. And uh, I just want to say that, um, you know, we're really appreciative. I think that, that uh, both of you are doing a very, very good job. Um, and if, if there's anything that you need, we, we really want to make sure that you have everything that you need. Um, I know that every little bit counts. We're, we're kind of under-resourced with and outnumbered out here. So yeah. um, let us know what you need in real time, and we'll try and get it to you. Okay. Thanks, thanks, Josh. Appreciate that a lot. And we're really working hard on this new. We're coming up with the uh, deployment for the new station that's going to be out there, addressing these issues. Like some of the people said earlier, maybe we need another DUI car. Maybe we need some more traffic enforcement. We're looking at all those things right now, both Lieutenant Fender and I, and my traffic sergeant, and trying to figure out how to deploy a little bit differently once we open that station. Thanks again. I appreciate that. Yeah. Doug. Yeah. Um... Lieutenant Fender, uh, Fender <laughs> Lieutenant Waters, I'm sorry. Um, you guys are so interchangeable. You, you show up at the same time so often. It's, it's like, you, know, you guys are twins. Um, two things. First off, I really appreciate everything you guys are doing. I, I think uh, it has been a real uh, game changer to have both of you on site for us. I appreciate it very much. Not that the prior regime didn't do a good job, but I fresh eyes, fresh approach. It looks Thank you. very much appreciated. Um, can you just give us a quick comment? Uh, I just saw this last week where Santa Monica is now the third from the bottom in crime in uh, the state. Any ripple effect over to us or should we be concerned about anything from that from your point of view? No, I, I think the reason that is is because they have that new rail coming in from the downtown area, but those people aren't making their way up here because there's not a rail coming from there into our area. Okay. So those people are coming down, both transients as well as the gangster element on the weekends, going to the pier. I have a few friends that work there. I actually sat down and had lunch today with a uh, Santa Monica um, traffic enforcement uh, motor. And we talked about these kind of things. He said it's all related to the rail. Wow. Good to know. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Any other? Joe questions? Drummond has her hand up. Uh, is, is she signed up? She already spoke. Okay. okay. Ms. Drummond, I'm sorry. We had public comment and you spoke along with two others and the public comment part period is closed now. Okay. All right. Um, anyone else? Brent? Yeah, I, I just know real quick. I, again, um, Lieutenant Waters, I really appreciate it. took time to meet together and get to know you a little bit. And I, I thought that was fantastic. And I really appreciate the efforts that I'm seeing in the canyons and, and what you guys are, are doing uh, to try to address some of the speeding problems and other issues already. So it's great to have you um, have you there. And thank you so much for what you do and what the Lost Hills is doing. So just thanks. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate that. I, uh, I think that goes for everybody, Chad. Everybody is very happy about the regime over there. It's quite a change all at once like that. So but um, I think we're all happy with what we see. And I've been down there, uh, the car show deal on Sunday, the last three or four weekends. And, you know, it's starting to change and your deputies have done a real good job. I shouted you out earlier about that. Um, the motors are doing a great job, especially our new motor that we've got. He just fit right in like he was here all the time. So I like what I see. And I think as time goes on, that this will be able to straighten this problem out, get this problem worked out. Uh, to everybody's benefit and uh, just be a better situation. If there is no other questions, Keegan. Oh, Keegan. Keegan. Thanks. Uh, Go ahead. Um, thanks for your time. Real quick, when earlier you were talking about, you set a stat around Zoom Beach doubling the capacity or doubling the um, visitors to Malibu. Do you know what the number is of people that visit Zuma on a crowded day? No, I don't. Um, I can get that for you, though. Yeah, no, there was about, I think it's 3,000 parking spots. Is that right, Chris, inside the lot? In the, how many spots? 3,000, is that right? In the second lot? In the one oh, down? In the Zuma lot. Oh, the whole Zuma lot, I don't know. I thought you were talking about PDS. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know in the whole lot, but you know yeah. what? We can get that number from yeah. Crystal Diaz, Susan. You know, we, we get regular reports from the lifeguards that has all that information. In fact, we yeah, got one today. Numbers. 
Yeah, it, it. it's pu every month they're, they're the yeah. first um, public safety agency that reports to me and that's the last item in the last page of your agenda packet but it's also posted to the website on the public safety page but it they sh i don't it doesn't show it daily it shows the number of visitors for the month yeah i remember like by the month i don't I didn't remember it saying it by the beach but i, I thought it was for it the does list it by yeah. location oh wow interesting okay cool anyways thanks guys that's all i got anyone else well, that brings us to our conclusion of our meeting. Chad, thank you very much. No problem, sir. You guys have a good one. And uh, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. And we'll second that. You want to call okay. for the word, Mary? You got Please. it. Chair Frost? Yes. Commissioner Gibbs? Yes. Commissioner Neat? Yes. Commissioner Spiegel? Yes. Vice Chair Stewart? Yes. Motion carries, you're adjourned. And we are right on dead on seven o'clock. <laughs>